they're looking to reduce expenses. They're looking to get into a more predictable business model. And I think that's why they've reached out to us. Welcome to Velocitize Talks. I'm Andy North, and today my guest is Tim Burke, CEO at Traffic Builders Digital Marketing and Conduit Digital. Tim, thank you so much for being here. Andy, thanks very much. We appreciate you reaching out. First of all, congratulations. Traffic Builders was recently listed second in Adweek's top 100 agencies, so that's fantastic. And, and again, congratulations on that. Uh, within a year, the company has advanced from 21st to second on that August list. Tell us a little bit about Traffic Builders and Conduit Digital and what sets it apart in the marketplace. Well, first of all, thanks very much. And yeah, it felt that busy around here. So that the good news is uh, that it was so busy and it felt that way. So it was validated by being the 21st fastest growing last year and then second this year, which was quite a surprise and quite an honor. Um, it, Traffic Builders started almost uh, 10 years ago as uh, the in-house agency. I was a television uh, advertising consultant and recognized that digital was becoming something that the local television advertisers were really looking at. And when it came time to uh, for the television salespeople to talk with their advertisers about digital, they didn't really have an option at that point. So I had conversations with the television group that I was working with at the time about doing an in-house agency. And that's exactly what we did. We started a, an in-house digital agency. So as the television reps went out into the local marketplace, uh, there was a full funnel solution that included digital. And that scaled from an original 25 markets up to 95 markets at the end of last year. And uh, really a, a couple of thousand clients uh, on a monthly basis and uh, many, many more campaigns than that. So it scaled quite uh, consistently over the last uh, eight or nine years. Got it, and that's fantastic. Uh, you've undertaken a, a really unique project over the past several months, uh, and that is you've spoken to more than 250 advertising agency owners. Uh, that's, that's quite a project, and that's a lot of input to, to, uh, to gather. Tell us about some of your findings, maybe some of the key findings from your your conversations, and what is the perspective of these agency owners as we go into 2021? Yeah, it's such a great question. And it's, it's, and it's been really such an interesting journey in talking with these folks. I think since, since uh, COVID started, you know, there are people that want to get into the digital marketing business. Everything's moving digital, and it's moving even faster now due to COVID. So there's more people that just want to get into the space. Um, we don't typically deal with startup agencies. We typically deal with successful agencies that want to scale. So there's another whole growth engine, and that is that we're about 10 years into a bull run economy. And economies don't typically last, you know, at the top for 10 years plus. So what we're hearing is agencies identifying that through COVID and looking at the economic forecast going forward, recognizing that everything doesn't grow to the sky, that they're looking to reduce expenses. They're looking to get into a more predictable business model. And I think that's why they've reached out to us. So the agency's owners that I'm talking with are those that are recognizing that the three, four, seven, eight people that they've got in the back end trying to do fulfillment work just can't keep up with Google and Facebook and the DSPs and all the various platforms. It's just too much. And our team is very specialized in every different product area. So each individual manager, product manager's task is to keep up uh, and more than keep up in their specialty space. So everybody's certified. Everybody keeps up with everything, in the, you know, what's going on the latest in those product spaces. Drilling down into that a little bit, how specifically has it affected some of these digital agencies? You mentioned that obviously uh, it's a great opportunity for them to go uh, even further online. We're seeing that across the board uh, with a lot of the businesses in the world. Uh, but are there challenges that some of your clients have been facing? Well, I think there's a great number of challenges that they've faced, uh, particularly this year. Um, and, and we've been right there with them. I mean, the physical space, that they've, you know, put time, energy, effort, and a lot of money into developing um, as people have been working remotely. That's been a difficult thing to navigate. So those agencies that weren't remote, 
have had to learn how to navigate that whole area and how to remain, um, you know, very productive remotely. The other thing is, uh, while all this is going on and we're all trying to navigate a pandemic for the first time in our lives, um, things have changed. But the agencies are really the forefront of the economy. So they've got to be the buoyant, you know, partner to their client base. And sometimes that's difficult because they're trying to guide their clients up and make sure that they're looking for specific opportunities uh, for those clients, sometimes in slightly different areas. So they, our agencies have had to get creative with looking not only new markets uh, for themselves, but new markets for their clients or parallel markets that the client you know, has some specialty in that there's opportunity in now because of the state of really the world. And given this acceleration to digital, how do you see the future uh, of this industry going forward? Is, uh, are we at max digital or is there even more headspace there? I think there's a lot smarter people than than I to 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 be able to you know to expand on that. But ultimately, what we see is there's there's a great group of people out there that are always looking shiny object, and those things tend to be you know a year and a half, two years, three years in, in the future, and we should always keep our eye on those things. But for today, um, and for the very foreseeable future, I think digital is not only here to stay, but it is growing. Um, it, as it, it's really just become baked into the process of so many things that we that we do now. Shifting gears a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about purpose driven marketing, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that's something you have worked with with some of your clients. You, you're hearing it as a buzzword a lot across the industry, particularly as we were sort of transitioning from what passed for normal into the pandemic. Uh, and you've seen a lot of agencies and brands start to lead more with their values and their purposes. Do you see that continuing and why is that important with some of your clients? I do see that as, as an important you know, uh, brand identification, but only if it's authentic. Um, I, I think that consumers are very savvy. And I think that the best way to brand yourself is to be your authentic self. And so I think whether it's purpose driven or whatever it is that you bring to your customer base, uh, and there's a myriad of, you know, of, of different, um, you know, different things that that our clients, uh, you know, bring to their clients who then bring to end consumers. But ultimately, purpose driven is meaningful if it's meaningful to the business. And I think if they're authentic about it, then I think it resonates. And when it resonates, people react. I want to look at your background for a moment. You have a strong sales background, obviously. Uh, you've worked in, in the entertainment industry, the TV industry, and now the advertising industry. What have you brought from, from all of that experience forward into where you are now? Uh, how does Tim Burke take everything, all of his sales experience, all of his background, and bring his best to his job every day? That's an awesome question. Um, I've believed for a long time that to be a marketer, you have to be relevant. And so when I was in radio, I knew I needed to know about television. When I was in television, I needed to know about cable. When I was in uh, con consulting, advertising consulting, I knew that I had to be uh, uh, very knowledgeable about digital because if you're going to truly consult local merchants, local agencies, you have to be knowledgeable about all, every, you know, all, everything that's out there for them. And so I've always viewed marketing, you know, as core marketing principles stand up regardless the channel. And so I think what, and, and I think the, a, a lot of people could potentially disagree with this, but what, what makes a good radio ad, a good television ad, you know, a good ad in social or a good ad in, in, in search. And I think ultimately it's understanding what the market for that product is looking for and making sure that it, you know it's attractively placed to them, so that that thumb stopping creative um, that gets people to stop the right people to stop. User experience has obviously risen quite a bit over the last few years, but in an era of eight second eight second attention spans and so many many channels, how do you, as an agency working with your clients, 
find ways to provide that excellent UX while taking into account that sometimes the medium you're on is only going to allow for an eight to 10 second message? Well, it's an awesome question. And I think, you know, I think everybody's trying to find the answer for that. But ultimately, I think here, what we what we know is that the funnel is comprised of various stages. Um, you know, there's there's a consumer journey for almost every purchase. And if you understand that, then that eight second at the top to get people's attention might just pull them in a little bit to learn more. And the way we tend to look at content and the way we look at our, our, our funnels here is a little bit like a USA Today article. You know, the headline pulls you in. The first paragraph gives you enough conversation, enough knowledge to be to be knowledgeable at the water cooler. But if you want to dig deeper, the rest of that article will fill in all the blanks for you. One of the questions we like to ask all our guests, is there a book, a blog, or a podcast that you've been reading or watching that you'd like to share with our readers? For, from a marketing standpoint, people like Marcus Murphy, who's become a friend of ours, every time I talk to him, my head just goes to all the possibilities. Um, he's, he's such a great marketing mind. Um, in the agency space, people like Clota Higgins, who uh, you know started her career, I think working at HubSpot and now consult ag agencies all over the world on culture and process. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk is somebody who just constantly explores, you know, the next step of things. And he's very thought provoking to listen to. And we've gotten to know him a little bit over the years as well. So I think people like that, that, um, that are constantly trying to frame, you know, the new reality. Thank you so much, Tim. Uh, my guest today has been Tim Burke, CEO at Traffic Builders Digital Marketing and Conduit Digital. Tim, thank you again for being with us. Hey, Andy, it was a pleasure. I really appreciate it and I enjoyed the conversation. Thank you.